capturing 360 photos using non-motorized turntable. For this video, I'm using this simple non-motorized turntable. It is a black color. If you wish to have a different color, so yours might be out of wood or plastic, uh, I would suggest to use these uh, foam boards that come in different colors, for example, white or black. If you do have an existing one, you could use Velcro connections so you will be able to exchange the color of the top. And you could obviously create something bigger. For this video, I will uh, show you how to do that. What I'm using, I will use the Velcros, this, scotch tape. I'll need a marker later on when I'm using the turntable. Well, any measuring tape would work to mark the segments on the turntable. So the first step is to decide how big you want your turntable to be. And for that, I'm using this. Probably mark it around here. So that would be the size of this turntable. And I'm estimating that I would probably want it to be around this big. I'm estimating where the center is and I'm measuring it. So the radius that I'm looking at is about it's like six and a half inch. You can choose any other radius that you would like to have. With that in mind, we'll use a pencil and I'll mark it at six and a half inch radius. And I'll use it from the center line. Sort of an estimate, I'll determine this and then I'll use a, a cutter to cut this. Once you finish the cutting, and I'll put this again in the center. I'll make sure using the measuring tape that I have, turntable right on the center. And if it is not, I'll make the adjustments. So this way you're making sure the top and the manual turntable, they're both covering the same. Now is the time to use the Velcros. You can do the same thing with the black one. So you can have two tops that you could exchange them based on the background and basing the item of your photography. So this, I purchased them again from Dollar Store, so they come taped on each side, and it has the one side that is hook and one side is the fabric. So what you wanna do, you wanna attach them together, create a line. Obviously you don't have to use this, this could be a double-sided tape. The advantage for this is that you will be able to use it on a different circumstance, a different covers, different backdrops. Uh, which is an advantage. I connect these together and then I measure, I put two rounds, so one I'll put here. Then the next one I cut it around the same size. So once the cutting is done, I peel off one side, attach it in, peel off the others, attach it in. So as the main cutting is done, I will pull this out. And again, you can create exactly something less with, let's say, black or any other color. I use this, I'll peel off one side, I'll peel off this other side, and I'll face this backwards in here. Voila, that creates my turntable. Now that we created the turntable, we need to determine how many frames we would like and how many sections we'll cut this. We have between 24 and 48 options, number of frames. Our free is 30 frames. To divide this into segments, 30 segments, first we need to know what's the circumference. So what I will do, I'll measure it. That gives me the dimensions of 42 and a half. Alternatively, I can measure the diameter and multiply that by 3.14. That should also give me the same 42 and a half or very close to it. So I multiply 13 and a half, which is the diameter of the circle by 3.14 and that gap gives me 42.4. Or as I mentioned before, we could measure the circumference of the circle and divide that into 30 because that's how many segments I would like to have and it's giving me the number 1.4 so what I will do using the pencil I will start marking on the edge so that it's not visible as I move forward every 1.4 inches I will make it a mark um, and if you're in centimeter you can do very similar 
uh, process. You just measured the diameter in centimeter, you could multiply uh, by 3.14, and then you divide that by whatever segment you want. In this case, we're doing 30, you divide that by 30, and whatever that number gives you, you will start marking it. So start over at one point, we do it on the edge, so it is very visible for us, and then we keep going. Once I completed my marks, as you will see on the edge, I'll end up with 30 sections. And now I'm ready to do my 360 capture. So I have my manual turntable here. I'm using another white foam as the base, and I'm using a white sheet that I purchased. I'm using it for my backdrop. And I'm putting something here, and I'll use a scotch tape to connect it to the top here. And this will give me my photo studio. I have natural lighting, but if you like, you can definitely add more lighting. Lighting for any 2D or 3D image is very important. The better the lighting, the higher resolution, the higher quality of your final image or final photo would be. Once we're ready with our photo studio that we made, I'll be taking a 360 photo of this miniature car here. The only thing I'm left off is phone holder, which could be a tripod like this, a more professional version, that has attachment to hold the phone. If you don't have a tripod or a phone holder um, that attach it, you could also use a simple cup. Any paper cup can be acted as a phone holder. All we would do is that we're gonna mark the phone. So we'll shape it in a form of a W. And then we use a cutter to cut. And that will give us our phone hold. Now that I have my photo studio complete, I will open the capture app, Glow 3D. I will go to the turntable. I will adjust the number of frames to 30 because that's how many segments I made. You could go 24. If it is a paid account, you could go up to 48. Now that I'm ready, I will leave about one and a half second every time that I want to move the item. So I have 30 frames. So I'll leave this at 45 seconds. So now I have number of frames 30, which is the same amount of the markings I have on my turntable. And I have 45 seconds in total for the full capture. I turn around, I make sure I have everything in, in picture. And once I'm satisfied, I press start capture. Every time I hear a capture sound, I'll move this one. So now my capture is complete. I will look at it to see how it looks from different angles. I could also turn on the loop. Then I press next. I'll crop it so I make sure it's on the screen. Then I press next. It will start uploading. As you notice, I did not use any special lighting. It was a natural lighting from the window and it was just the putt light that was above the object that I was taking the photo of. However, the better and the more lighting you have, the result will be much better. Okay, now that our upload is complete, I will look at the platform and I press edit. I will go to adjustments and I start increasing the contrast. As I increase the contrast, as you see, the background will be eliminated. I'll increase the sharpness so I can see more details. I'll go to the tone and I'll reduce the tone slightly so I can lose that yellow at the bottom. Now that I'm satisfied with the result, I press save. I'll wait for the upload. Now that our, our upload process is complete, we can look at the model from different angles. We can zoom in. Even though that we didn't use any special lighting, still is captured a good amount of detail. Here, we could make it public and share it to Instagram, share a URL, a GIF, embed it to our website, generate an MP4 video, or simply email the link, post it to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or send a message to someone.